Okay, so our problem today is we want to find the area under the curve from A to B, and the curve is greater than zero. It's above zero. It's positive. So here's our picture. This area is what we want to try to find. So what we want to first do is divide the section A to B into equal subsections. So I've labeled, it's basically these sections, we want them to be equal. So we'll call that delta x, and to figure out that width, we're gonna take b minus a and divide by how many subintervals that we want. And this will give us all equal widths for each interval. So as I mentioned, this a is gonna be my x naught, the b will be my xn. So we wanna make rectangles with arbitrary heights. And what that means is for each interval, and these are our x intervals, x, k minus one to x, k, we wanna choose a point inside that interval or including the endpoints so that when we plug that into our function, that will be the height of our rectangle. So basically we're gonna have R1, and again, we'll have some height. Oops, it's gonna be a rectangle. So R2, R3, basically some RK. If we add up the area of these rectangles, then we're gonna have an approximate area under the curve from A to B. So area is gonna be approximately equal to the sum of these rectangles, the areas of these rectangles that we add up from one to N. So the formula for the area of the rectangles is length times width, it's length times width. And just a note here, our xk star, the height, the arbitrary heights of the rectangles, we can choose the left endpoints of the rectangle, the right endpoints of each rectangle, or the midpoint. So the area, now if we want to get a better approximation, we'll use more area. So if we want to get a better approximation under this curve, we'll use more rectangles because then there won't be so much error. So when you look at our rectangle, we've got our width and the length. So we'll call the width, what we've already determined up here, all equal width for each interval. These are all gonna be equal. So that's going to be delta x which is our b minus a over n. And we really don't need a counter on it because they're gonna be all the same. Now for the heights, we've already said it here too. We have f of x k is the height of the rectangle. So our area is the sum, the length is the height, which is f of x k star which again will be our left endpoint or our right endpoint or the midpoint. And then delta x is my width. So length times width, that's your area. And we sum it up, k equals one to n. And it's not equal, it's approximate. We're just, this is how we approximate. To be honest, I don't really use this formula when I do approximations. Let's make a note. So this is our approximate area for n number of rectangles. So our note one here for a better approximation. If you look at our picture, if we have more rectangles, this space here will be smaller for each rectangle. We're gonna use more rectangles. In my note two, for exact area, the exact area is when 
the number of rectangles approaches infinity. When n approaches infinity, which is our number of rectangles, and this is a to b, basically what we have, the number of rectangles, there's an infinity number of them, the width of them is approaching zero, it's the same thing, and you can see here, these lines are gonna be the rectangles. If the width is gonna be zero, the number is gonna be, of rectangles is gonna be infinity. So that's the same as width approaching zero. Really, there'll be no spaces between those lines. So that formula is the area of f of x k star, which is the arbitrary height times your delta x, k equals one, 2n, and then we take the limit as n approaches infinity. And that's our formula for the exact area under a curve from a to b when your function is greater than zero. So now let's draw some pictures of what left endpoint means and right endpoint or midpoint. So over here we'll draw right endpoints. We'll do midpoints after I do these two. For the approximation, this is important to understand how to draw because we don't really need formulas at all to approximate it, to draw the given number of rectangles and define the area of each rectangle. You just gotta know which side of the rectangle to use as a height. So this says use the left endpoint of the rectangle. Our first area is gonna be this rectangle and we gotta find a height of it. And so this is saying to use the left side right here and to go across like so. So that's our first rectangle. Our second rectangle, we use the left endpoint, the left side of it, and we go across, that's the height of it. That's my second rectangle and so on. So you find the height of the left endpoint and go straight across. And then we find that area, width and height. And this one, we go straight across. I have to go down to there. It's a little bit above the curve. Here, we'll go across. And then down. Here, we'll go across. And then down, across, and down, across. And there's our area under the curve. And it's not all under the curve, obviously, because some of our rectangles had to be above the curve. But it's an approximation, of course. So over here, the right end point, so for this first rectangle, we go to the right, and then we go across. That's my height of the rectangle, which obviously we have to fill down. We go here, go left, and fill down. Left, and fill down. We go to the right of the rectangle, left, and fill down. Well, there's nothing to fill down. Left. And that's the area we'll be finding to approximate it. So on this number line, the x, just expanding this out a little bit, my first interval starts at a, and this one, my x1, is a plus my delta x. And this is a plus 2 delta x, right there. And then this one will be a plus 3 delta x. We just add one more delta x to each. This length is delta x. So you can see we start at a, and we add a delta x to get there. We start here and add another delta x to get a plus 2 delta x, and so forth. So for my left end point, my formula for it. We only need the formula for the exact area. So for the series, for the sigma, the count when the k equals one, then this zeroes out and my first rectangle is a. For my second one, it's a plus delta x, which is that one and so forth. For my right endpoint, just so you we can See it spread out a little bit more. We have A, so we're starting here. We're adding delta X to 
get to our second one, but we remember we start. This is my start right there. That's my first start. So we have still the same picture, a plus delta x, a plus two delta x, but this is my start. So my right endpoint, the formula is xk, which is a plus k delta x mm. for k equals one, two, three, and so forth. So for k equals one, our starting point, our first rectangle is a plus delta x. That's our first rectangle. Like I said, that's my start. So it works and so forth. Now for the midpoint, we use the point in between. We use this point. We go straight across. We use the midpoint. We go straight across. That's my height. The midpoint is the height. This midpoint is the height. This midpoint is the height. We have to go down. This midpoint. And there's the midpoint. So to find the midpoint, we just take the average. So to get to the middle, add them up and divide by two. Okay, so we want to find the area bounded by this function and between x equals zero and eight and the x-axis. We want to find the approximate area of the space using four subintervals and left point approximation and then right point approximation. We want to find the exact area using n subintervals and right point approximation. And then we want to find the actual area using geometry. So part A, remember when we're finding the approximate area, I prefer to just draw it out and find the area of each rectangle and then add them together. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna use formulas. I will need to use a formula though, but not necessarily you have to use the formula to find the width of each mm -hmm. subinterval. Let's draw this out first. Sometimes it's just obvious what the width should be. Sometimes you need the formula. So y equals 3x, plug in 0. I'll call it f of 8. So I've drawn, looks like there's four rectangles, or four widths, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have between 0 and 8. So our a equals 0, and our b equals 8. So my delta x, well, I kind of drew it out. I didn't have to use a formula, but let's check a formula, which is b minus a over n. 8 minus 0 all over n equals 4 rectangles, which is 2. So delta x. And we saw here we have the length of 2, 4, 6, 8. Works out. So our area is equal to a area... Sorry, our area is going to be approximately area 1 plus area 2, area 3 plus area 4. Our area is approximately k equals 1. So again, this is our width for each of our rectangles. Our length 1, well, let's find what we are doing left point approximation. So in my first rectangle, the left point is actually zero. So I make my rectangle. That is going to be f of zero. That's my first point. Times two. Plus my le left approximation. Of my second one is f of two. So f of two times two is my width. My length three, it's my left going across, which times my width is two. So for f of zero, you can see by the picture, it's three times zero equals zero. f of two, 3 times 2 equals 6. Again, 3 times 0, 2 
two times three, four times four. So my area is approximately 72 square units. That's the area of the shaded. Each four rectangles added together is the approximate area. And there's no rectangle in the first one. For right end point, that was left end point. I should write that out actually. So for right end point, we're gonna go up and that's my height. That's my first rectangle. Go up, that's my height. That's my right. Right end point, that's my height. So the areas of each of these. So the width is still two. So again, this is my first one, f of two. My second one is f of four. Two times three is six. Four times three is 12. Eight times three. So we can see in each picture, this over approximated the area, this under approximated the area, which is 72, probably somewhere in the middle, maybe exactly in the middle since it is a straight line and not a curve. But let's do part B now. And we want to use right point approximation. Right point approximation, we have to use this formula. So our function, so we can't use the same delta x because we don't know what n is. So we use n for n. Got to use the formulas for this problem. So area, so using, so we have a, a is zero because it's on the interval zero to eight. And then we have delta x is 8 over n. Since f of x is 3x, so this is 24k over n. Cleaning it up. Okay, so we're allowed to take constants out from this series. The counter is k, which means that's the only thing that's changing is k, which means n is not changing. It has a constant upper limit. So that n squared could go in the front. It has to go in the front and between the limit and the series though. The 192 is a constant. The property we learned in the last video says we can bring that constant to the front also. Again, we brought those constants out. So what we're left with is this series of sum of k. And remember, there is a formula we learned in the last video. And this is n, n plus 1 over 2. The 192 over n squared is here. And the limit is still in front. I'm distributing this. Cleaning it up. Only one of them gets canceled. Actually, we have to divide that. We can distribute that limit. And we get 96 square units. So our last is find area by geometry. And since this is the exact area, it's not a surprise that we got the same answer. It's units squared, oops, square units. And one last note before we leave.
So basically, f is continuous on AB means f can be positive or negative. Our previous, to get the er exact area, the function had to be positive. But if it's positive or negative, this is the picture that we have. This is A, and this is B, and this is area 1, and this is area 2. We assume that the areas are positive because that's what area means. Then our net area is going to be the area of 1 minus the area of 2. So really what we have here is, since it can be here is where our F values are negative, you can see in the formula that it's adding up the negative values that are negative. And when F is positive, it's always positive, you get the area. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.